Hi, I'm Bill Bernard, Vice President of Security and Content Strategy here at DeepWatch. And today I've got Brandon Bischoff with me, Senior Manager of our Sim Operations and Engineering Group. Uh, Brandon, thanks for taking a little time today. Yeah, you're welcome. Glad to be here. So let me start off with, with the Bob's question. What would you say you do here at DeepWatch? I mean, if you ask my kids, I do nerd things. Um, if you ask my boss, um, I make things happen. And if you talk to my team, my job is to make sure that them as platform engineers um, feel enabled to make decisions and make the right choices to help our customers get the most out of their Splunk and you know, and all that spend that they're putting towards it. So, yeah. Excellent. So, so managing that platform team, um, you know, what are what are some of the key capabilities that anybody using Splunk as a sim should be focusing on to get the best value out of Splunk? Probably the first thing you need to do is really know where your sources are and what the data they each provide. Um, we find with a lot of customers, there's a lot of redundancy or duplicate, you know, entries, essentially. Um, you know, more than one source can provide DNS logs into a Splunk environment. So you as an easy example. Um, so really some of the, the basics, just knowing what you're ingesting and what you really want that use case to be is probably the most important part in maintaining the guardrails on your Splunk ingest so that you're not wasting license on things that are less critical. Um, so you have more room to bring in um, additional use cases and additional sources that provide, you know, you know, even more information and more, you know, efficacy to what you're doing. So, yeah. So besides uh, besides getting the right data in, what are uh, maybe a couple of thoughts on um, how to how to make most use of that data once it is in? It really starts with having the discussion even before you do the ingest. So trying to figure out the thing that you want the outcome to be, and then in a lot of cases you come up with this great use case on paper, you put it into practice, and you realize it's really not efficient or effective. Um, so being willing to pivot or change or adapt what you did. It may not work for what that use case was, but it might actually be really helpful to another group or another business unit within the organization. So um, you don't necessarily have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You can really um, use all that effort in multiple different ways. And I think that's one of my favorite parts about Splunk is you really never waste an opportunity um, when you're doing a, a new use case or a new innovation. Like You can certainly go find somewhere where it would be really helpful. So... So Brandon, what are the best ways for an aspiring Splunk engineer or maybe a SOC manager who needs to train up his team of, of Splunk engineering resources uh, to, to help learn Splunk as a sim and, and to get that key knowledge that they're going to need to be able to best utilize Splunk? Yeah, you want to start foundationally with something like a Linux certification. Um, a lot of the querying and the things that under underneath even Splunk is Linux. So having that understanding is, is crucial. Uh, I find it really builds a good foundation. Uh, then from there, you just start with the basic certification um, paths that Splunk has laid out on their, their training site. So, you know, the core user, the core admin type power user, just those very first couple certifications gives you a really good understanding. You'll learn the vocabulary. You'll learn what Splunk thinks the tool does. Um, one of the great things about Splunk is it can kind of do anything you want it to. Um, but if you don't know the words and the way that they use them, um, you'll find when you're conversing with other engineers, you'll you'll get a little lost in the terminology. So for me, as a as a manager telling my team what they need to do to to improve and to move on in their careers, those are the things that I start them out with and and then keep progressing down the path as with the harder and more you know expert level certifications. And, and frankly, just spend time in the tool, build your own lab, you know, put some sources into it and see what you break, you know, and just, just spend time with it. Brandon, what are a couple of the pitfalls for those starting their Splunk as a Sim journey need to avoid? Don't overcomplicate it. Just start with the basics, get that first source in, get it in clean, um, really look at the, you know, the, what it does, what the data generates. Um, you know, a lot of folks want to bring windows logs into Splunk. Well, those are really noisy. Um, yeah, it's an easy thing to source in, but it also blows through that, you know, free five gig license uh, real quickly if you're not careful. So start with something really simple like um, a basic home router. Um, and like I said, spend time learning Linux commands, like open up cheat sheets, read Reddit threads, whatever, you know, like really understand where, to, where good sources are to find answers to the questions and the things that you're going to run into. And 
um, I think you'll find that it's it's still going to be you know frustrating because it's always hard to learn a new skill. But over time, you'll you'll push through the 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 hard and the the difficult and the tricky parts, right? So um, really, just spending time, you know, within the product itself and and keeping it simple for a while, like just add one thing at a time and then try to make it do the next thing and try to do the next thing instead of trying to make some grandiose, overcomplicated, you know, solution. So. Excellent. So bring it back a little bit, Brandon, to, to DeepWatch. Why does DeepWatch focus so many engineering resources on optimizing Splunk? Uh, frankly, we, we have so many people just because there's a need. Um, if everybody could do it, I don't think we would need to be here. Let's, let's be honest. I think there's, um, there is some expertise and some knowledge that is there that I think we've, because we touch so many environments and so many use cases across so many industries, um, we're very efficient and very good at what we do. And we, we can see we've been, odds of us finding a brand new problem we've never seen before, um, are, are pretty low. So between the whole team, we would have the expertise and somebody out there on the team has probably seen this somewhere else and we can work through those situations a little bit quicker. So, you know, there's, there's strength in numbers. Um, and I think there's a lot of value in the communication and the collaboration that we, we encourage here. And so, um, that makes us really good, um, and really effective at, at getting Splunk to where, where it needs to be. So, you know, it's just one of the, so actually why I like it here, we just have a lot of good people and, and we're all in it to, you know, make the customer's environments better. So with DeepWatch's recent announcement of the open security data architecture, uh, an architecture where DeepWatch is talking about not necessarily having everything uh, come into a singular SIM, but being able to work with some of the data where it lives, uh, will that change DeepWatch's focus on Splunk? With the addition of the open secure data architecture, that's not going to change anything for us here at, at DeepWatch. Uh, Splunk is still the best gold standard of, of data aggregation and and security analysis, I, that's just not going anywhere for us. Um, we have invested a lot of time and effort into this solution. And and frankly, it's really good at what it does. So with OSDA coming in, uh, I think it's going to even, I think it's going to allow us to be even more effective and allow us to bring in even more unique cases and unique sources to really bring um, better data fidelity, to bring better information forward, so to really allow our customers to get the information they need from all the things that we generate every day as users. So um, it's going to be pretty impressive once we get all the, the secret sauce and the magic working for our customers. I'm really excited to see what we can come up with. OSDA will allow us tighter integrations with tools we traditionally don't have the resources or the, uh, the ability to really bring in. And so it's going to allow us to really provide better responses, better reactions to the changing environments whether that's regulatory and compliance type issues, or if it's a threat actor, it, you know, the more data you have kind of the, the better it is, but at the same time, the more data you have, the harder it is to spot the needle. Uh, so I really feel like OSDA is going to be a really good way for us to, to find that needle in the haystack that's constantly moving and flowing. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Really appreciate your insights. Thanks for having me.